Hey, what's up guys, I'm Styler, and in this video I'm going to review the Elephone S8 in blue, a beautiful smartphone from China with a big 6-inch Quad HD bezel-less display. So this phone has been out for some time, in fact more than 3 months now, but I didn't have the opportunity to finish a full in-depth review before today. So the question, is the Elephone S8 still worth it, and what are the pros and cons? Well, for that, stay tuned and check out my full review. If you're interested in this phone, remember to check the video description for more info and a link. So without any further ado, let's start the video. With the phone you get all the usual stuff. Like a standard English quick start guide. A SIM tray pin. Type C to 3.5mm headphone jack adapter. A CE certificated wall charger with 5V 2A. A nice looking USB type C cable. And last a clear silicon case that fits the phone perfect. So with this you don't scratch the phone and can keep the glass back nice and clean while there are cutouts for the USB port, speaker and microphone. So we have the MediaTek Helio X25 which is a Deca core CPU clocked at 2.5 GHz. A non-removable big 4000 mAh battery. We also have 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of internal storage. Out of this internal storage we have around 52 gigs left while the RAM speed is average. The SIM tray is totally flush with the frame, so perfectly aligned. The SIM tray supports two nano SIMs, but unfortunately there is no support for a micro SD card. Compared to the size the phone feels surprisingly light in the hand and the back looks amazing in this Lumia blue color. The back is slightly curved in all four directions and made of real scratch resistant glass. In the top we have a Sony IMX219 front camera on 8 megapixel, light and proximity sensor and a good ear speaker. The LCD display is protected by Corning Gorilla Glass and on 6 inch with the resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels also known as Quad HD or 2K. The phone features normal on-screen buttons that also can be hidden, so there are no backlit capacitive hardware buttons, but you can also just use the smart single home button for back, home and recent. And finally in the left corner we also find a white LED lamp, and no it's not a flash, that can be used together with the front camera with good results. To use the front camera you need to flip the phone upside down. It has support for different color filters. And there is also a HDR option and a LED lamp that have three levels in brightness. There is picture in picture mode. You can zoom in and out. And in the option we find stuff like anti-shake, face detection, raw and more. And with the video settings set to fine, videos will be recorded in 4K, so that's pretty impressive. Overall a great front facing camera that can capture a lot of detail. Here you see more info about the built-in display. The picture quality is great with good viewing angles and the brightness is fine, but I still must admit that I have seen better and it doesn't come any near the quality of for example the Yukital Mix 2. The side bezels are kind of thin but still visible. Regarding the screen sensitivity, I haven't experienced any ghost touches or problems. The touch panel is extremely smooth, better than on many other cheap devices I lately have tested and can register up to 5 touches at the same time, so it is perfectly optimized. In the phone settings we find many different special features. Here the one to activate 3 on-screen buttons or the smart home button, which can also be used as a back, home or recent button. There is a built-in task manager and dual speed that can boost the foreground app. Various smart gestures, a normal or special sports mode for better performance, different sound enhancement settings, some interesting display settings like reduced blur in VR mode, clear motion and myovision where you can tweak the display colors and contrast. And last in accessibility you can enable OGG mode and also quick boot. The 360 degree fingerprint sensor works very good, the accuracy is high, the speed is what I would call average not among the fastest, but also not the slowest I have tried, but in terms of speed, it can of course not be compared with a OnePlus 5T. Among the pre-installed apps we also find something called AppLogger, 
with that you can lock certain apps, but unfortunately it doesn't work with fingerprint scanner, only with a security pattern. The phone is missing a real 3.5mm headphone jack, and that's why Elephone included a small 3.5mm headphone jack adapter for the USB Type-C port, so in the top we only find a noise cancelling mic. The phone is 9.1mm thick in the center of the bottom, so not the slimmest, still it feels slim in the hand because of the curved back and metal frame. The metal power and volume keys are placed on the right side, they are responsive and tactile and do not rattle, and funny to see is that the power button has a special pink edge. In the bottom we find a single speaker, a microphone and a USB Type-C port. The speaker does not impress me, but still it is loud, and the quality is what I would classify as good. The phone has support for USB on the go, but before you can use it, you need to enable it in accessibility. The built-in non-removable 4000mAh battery gives enough battery for one full day, but it also depends on what you use your phone for. The screen on time with mixed light and heavy use was on about 5 to 5.5 five hour in sports mode, so this could be better. And with the included wall charger, I was able to charge 45% in 60 minutes, so the charging speed is not exactly the fastest, and a full charge takes about 2 hours. A pretty cool feature in multitasking mode is that you can pick out apps and then resize and move them around in a window, something I haven't seen on other bestseller's budget phones from China. Here's some device info about the built-in Sony IMX cameras. The main camera app is just the stock one used from MediaTek. It has picture in picture, color filters, and in the settings we find anti-flicker, zero shutter delay and anti-shake, raw, and in video mode a 4K option. The shutter speed is acceptable, but could be a little bit faster. And if you're more into hardware buttons, you can also use the volume keys as a shutter button. Overall the camera quality is pretty good, it takes some great detailed pictures with nice colors, sharpness and focus. What I didn't like was the speed of the focus, which is kind of slow. The recorded video quality is just average and the sound quality could be a lot better and switching from full HD to 4K doesn't make a big difference. Regarding the GPS, the 3D fix was done in few seconds, it has support for GLONASS, the signal reception seems strong but the accuracy could be better, the best I got was about 7 meter. As for the sensors, it has a lot of them built in and things like gyroscope, 
e-compass, accelerometer, and proximity sensor. Works perfect, which means that 360 VR videos and compass will work without any issues. Moving on to the performance. The CPU used in this phone is called Helio X25 and should be one of the best for MediaTek, but the score is just a little bit above average. In answer 2 it scores close to 85,000, which is okay for a decent day-to-day -day performance, but far from what you see on real flagship phones using a high-end Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset. But then again, considering the price tag, I guess it can't be directly compared. 3D games like Asphalt 8 runs good in high settings most of the time, because I did also sometimes experience some frame drops here and there, and some heavy throttling. And I guess that happens when the chipset gets too warm. The phone is using Android 7.1.1 with wireless update support and comes out of the box with the Google Play Store. On top it uses Elephone's own launcher, which is very close to stock Android, but there are unfortunately no app shortcuts. The phone comes out of the box relatively clean, so no real bloatware, besides of the app logger, a task manager and the Elephone service app. The highest brightness could be a little bit higher, but in return the lowest is then also pretty dark. And last it does also have full support for Android 7 split screen mode. The network connectivity is good on this phone and it can connect to 2G, 3G, 4G and Bo LTE. The network bands are great and there is support for some special bands used in the US and of course also for LTE band 20 which is important for users in Europe. It has support for dual band Wi-Fi on 2.4 and 5 GHz, where the download speed was an amazing 106 megabits, so extremely fast. And with the latest YouTube app you can play videos smooth in 1080p at 60 frames per second, which looks really nice with the big bezel-less Quad HD display. So now to my final conclusion. The Elephone S8 is a great looking smartphone with a huge Quad HD display. A good and easy to use front fingerprint scanner, very nice Sony IMX cameras, both front and rear, and super good performance with a fully optimized smooth touch panel. What I didn't really like was the missing notification LED, a weak dual LED flash, slow camera focus, the stock MediaTek camera app and the simple UI. Regarding the software, I think Elephone could have added some more convenient features, like for example app shortcuts on the desktop, app logger with real fingerprint sensor support, and maybe also some kind of support for themes. And last but not least, it is totally missing any kind of fast charging, so charging the phone takes ages. And 3D games could run better with less throttling. Bottom line though, is that the Elephone S8 overall does a good job, especially with the hardware, but it is not perfect. And there is plenty of room for improvements, especially in the software. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.